Well, welcome back for Kirby's Return to Dreamland, but this time for the Nintendo Switch, named Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only, Tiana here, and I am from the likes of the Mexi Toys videos here. So ladies and gentlemen, since then we've now on to spring, so you know what that means, it's time for more Kirby action. Because I was originally gonna able to actually decide able to tackle through certain Kirby spin-off titles, but we'll wait until for a very, very long while. Because, as you probably already know about the fact the matter is, though, as you can see on screen, we have decided able to play through Kirby's Return to Dreamland again, but this time on a Nintendo Switch called Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. First came out in 2023 for the Nintendo Switch, as I already stated this three times. So obviously about the fact that if you couldn't tell what this game is all about, this is basically a remake of the forms of the Nintendo Wii game called Kirby's Return to Dreamland, meaning about the fact that they've got enhanced graphics, and on top of that, some more features that was not found in the forms of the original version, and on top of that, some more additional things that how this version actually has to offer. Like, you probably already noticed about the fact that there was actually a particular... Uh, thing in the background, which I'll probably discuss more details about that until whatever we get the game started. So because of this though, yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to able to do in this game again, but this time in gorgeous HD, and on top of that with, uh, you know, playing on a Nintendo Switch, because it's been quite some time since I actually last played the Nintendo Switch for some time, because, well, obviously aside from the fact that recently Sonic is basically done with uh, Sonic Origins for a while, until the Plus Edition is going to be releasing at some point. So, either way though, not much else to say about this, honestly. So, either way, and since about the fact that, well, today's day is, of course, the, is the 3rd of April today, in this case, in 2023 today, I'll explain more details about the forms of other stuff worth noting for until eventually. But as you can tell, on the actual main menu selection, it's a little bit different this time around, because normally, in the Wii version, it actually takes you to the main menu, like the file selection menu, but then it just somehow replaces it into the forms of two separate menus, which we have well, obviously the main mode, as well as from that, there's also Merry Mega Land, which, all in all, we're about to able to show those off eventually, so either way, yeah, let's watch the cuts.
So yeah, the story in uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe remains the same as the Forms of Power does it on the original Wii version, like you can still be able to come across into Lore Star Cutter, but he forms of Mega Lore. But what makes this a bit different this time is that we actually got ourselves the Mega Lore Helper, which means about the fact the matter is though is that it actually gives you a helping hand if you have struggling for your adventure. It's basically the easy mode of the game. So basically with Helper Mega Lore, it actually helps you to able to give you a double of the amount of health with the forms of that particular potion, or if you fell down to the pit, it'll take you, you know, straight back to the level itself. You know, it kind of reminds me of the forms of, uh, Let's just say the green balloons from not only from Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, but also with Tropical Freeze as well. And same applies with the forms of Tails um, icons or Tails mode. That uh, basically it just takes you straight back to the level or something if you fall down to a pit. But either way, I'm probably not going to activate Help and Make a Lawn mode because obviously I've already known about this game. Like, ever since on the original Wii version, and now we're onto the Nintendo Switch, so it's been like... Well, I would say, it's been three years ago since we've actually last did done our Let's Play of Kirby's Return to Dreamland back on the Nintendo Wii, during the forms of Before the Lockdown Exists anyway. So, either way, so, either way, let's get into it with the forms of the first world in Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, and that's of course, Cookie Country. So, either way, let's dive right into the first stage, and as you can see, if you do have multiplayer, obviously you do have multiple control options this time, as opposed to strictly to the Wii Remote controls. So, speaking of which, I'm going to be playing all with the, uh, well the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, because obviously the Switch Pro Controller is awesome regardless. So because of this though, relatively speaking though, about the fact the matter is though, is that we actually have more buttons to our disposal this time. So either way, and on top of all that stuff, that there are some quite significant changes for this particular version of the game, compared to the forms of how it does it on the original Wii version. So for instance, we can no longer, well you can still able to actually take control of Kirby by simply using the directional pad, if you're a fan of the 2D platformer to begin with, that is entirely recommendable. But now this time we can able to actually have ourselves the analog stick this time. So either way, and on top of all that stuff though, is about the fact that, well, relatively speaking though actually, that uh, there was actually the moment where, actually I'll explain more details about that in a moment, because all these copy abilities, as you can see, are remains exactly the same as before in the forms of how it does it since the original version on the Wii. However, there's a lot of differences this time, and that is about the fact that I believe it does have more movesets or something like that, but I'll explain more details about that during the forms of this entire Let's Play, for the sake of the forms of every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, it's going to be a lot more opposite this time around, though, compared to the forms of how it does it in 2020, that basically, though, that originally it was supposed to be during the forms of in, uh, well, Tuesdays and Thursdays normally, but because of both uh, Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel, are still about to be able to actually focusing on Super Mario All-Stars, and speaking of which though, they've almost finishing up in terms of Super Mario All-Stars before we move on to the next set of Let's Plays to come. So, either way though, that might be saying something, so... Now of course, to get 100% everything in this game, is about the fact that you still need to able to collect those energy spheres if you manage to able to collect every single, like, not only uh, uh, every single like challenge stage is unlocked, but also with sub games as well. So speaking of which though, it's about that fact that, well, in order to able to 100% uh, everything in this game this time around, there's actually going to be brings us into the forms of some new content, which I've already established that earlier, since the beginning portion of the video. Now obviously the super ability still remains the same as before, except now that when you get the super ability in the first place, you do stumble across a new animation this time around. So, that's a little bit of improvement, I might add. Especially concerning about the fact that, well, usually relatively speaking now, is about the fact that with this particular game in mind, that uh, this used to be part of the celebration of the 30th anniversary of Kirby. Now, and by the looks of all that stuff though, I think if I recall correctly, that this is actually the last game to be announced during the forms of the special uh, Kirby's 30th anniversary, alongside with the forms of Kirby and a Forgotten Land, as well as the forms of Kirby's Dream Buffet, 
And, uh, yeah, it looks like Kirby is doing a very, very fantastic job when it comes to forms for its 30th anniversary ever since in 2022. Despite the fact that this particular version of Kirby's Return to Dreamland right here did obviously came out recently this year in 2023. So, relatively speaking, though, everything else will be pretty much accounted for for the sake of time. So, either way, um, something's worth noting for about the fact the matter is, though, is that, well... Relatively speaking, we actually got ourselves some new stuff on its way to a new forms of in Mario Kart Tour, which I think I'll talk more details about that once we get into the later stages in the game. So because of that, of course, just like the forms of how it does in the original Wii version of Kirby's Return to Dreamland, that you still come across into the forms of those dimension portals, which allows you to able to take place in the forms of another dimension and stuff like that. And once you make your way to the very end of that particular portal segment, then you fight against with those... Uh, you know what I mean, with certain bosses and all that stuff, and relatively speaking, after we defeat the boss, then you obviously get yourself some more energy spheres. So, as a result, yeah, everything else plays pretty much exactly like the original Wii version, except with some slight changes here and there. Like, as you can see, as soon as we get to the actual, uh, the end of the level right there, I believe the animation is actually heavily borrowed from the likes of not only Triple Deluxe, but also with Planet Robobot and even Star Allies, that you get yourselves a brief animation before you get into the actual goal game. And speaking of goal game though, it plays pretty much exactly like the forms of how it does it on not only the original version of the game, but also with Kirby's Adventure and Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. So because of that though, it still remains unchanged. And because of that though, I get this strong sense of feeling in order to able to actually access to Merry Mega Land, as far as the actual side mode is concerned, I'm pretty sure we need to complete the second stage, if I recall. Mind you, it's been quite a while since I actually have last played this, because mind you, I'm still in the middle of the process of playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, before we get onto the forms of the newest installment of the Zelda games, and that is, of course, um, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So because of that, though, um... Yeah, everything else goes all fine and dandy and all that stuff. Especially concerning about the fact that now we actually got ourselves the, uh... Well, the 10 minutes of gameplay ever since in any forms of a couple of days ago. And speaking of which, though, I believe that both Mighty and Ray have both forgot to mention about this during the course of being a Super Mario All-Stars Let's Play. That basically, in addition about the fact that with The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, now finally got itself its 10 minutes of gameplay, which, again, I'll explain more details about that, assumingly, if we manage to able to get to the next world. So because of this, though, relatively speaking, the first world is very simple and easy, especially concerning about the fact just to get used to with the main mechanics of the game. And on top of all that stuff, though, there's not much else to say about this. For the most part. So... And on top of all that stuff, though, I did originally was expecting to be able to actually do a gameplay footage of the demo version of this game, because truth be told, that I wasn't exactly going to be able to download that in the first place, because after all, I've already experienced the Wii version loads of times, so as a result, though, I don't feel like trying to be able to actually play the demo at this point, especially because I already know how this game is supposed to be at, whilst compared to something new, then obviously I'd be very curious to download the demo version or something, so... Either way, and suffice to know, it's about the fact that relatively speaking, unlike the forms of how it does it in Kirby Star Allies, alongside with Super Kirby Clash, and on top of that with, uh, Kirby Stream Buffet, and, uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, where basically all of these games are running at 30 FPS, on the Nintendo Switch, obviously. Between uh, both this game, alongside with Kirby Fighters 2, basically these are the only Kirby games on the Nintendo Switch is actually running consistently with 60 FPS, which I will say it does look pretty impressive, especially concerning about the fact that, well, despite this is actually based off from the original Wii game called uh, Kirby's Return to Dream Land to begin with, but, uh, also, I just realized something is about the fact that I believe between every single enemies in the game, including ourselves, with the forms of Kirby, Meta Knight, and uh, also King Diddy D, and of course, uh, Bandata Waddle D, basically all those characters on screen now actually has um, actual outlines, which it kind of seems reminds me of something related to not only uh, Kirby Battle Royale for the Nintendo 3DS, but also it kind of reminds me of the similar concept as the forms of how it does it in 
was the same Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 3DS, because that game also utilizes the actual outlines. I'm guessing it's probably because of the forms of the actual small screen resolution, or something like that. So, it might be seems a bit jarring at first, when if you do manage to see the actual outlines for certain characters on screen, but I'm sure I'll get used to it, especially cause concerning about the fact that the visuals in this game looks absolutely gorgeous, especially because, like I said before, that we finally got ourselves a 60fps uh, Kirby game, alongside with Kirby Fighters 2, as from the forms of the eShop downloadable game, so... You know, it feels like I keep on getting ones every single time whenever I manage to get into the gold games, which I think is actually pretty impressive, all things considered. So, yeah, I do apologize for that particular awkward uh, sniff going on at this point, because I've almost got myself my croaky throw at the moment, so I do apologize for that. I'll try to fix that at some point. So, yeah, I think if you complete the second stage, then we can now able to actually access to Merry Mega Land. Which basically, this allows you to able to play some even more sub-games, which originally, back on the Wii version of the game, there's only like two sub-games, which there are Ninja Jojo and Scope Shot. In this version of the game this time around though, taking an inspiration of the forms of Mario Party Superstars, not only does it bring back the forms of Ninja Jojo, but also they brings into two brand new sub-games, and also, are seven familiar sub-games from Kirby's past. So as a result though, we'll talk more details about that once we get into the forms of the Mega Land to begin with. So, or generally speaking, Merry Mega Land. So, but that won't be for a while because this is just the beginning of this particular playthrough. So I expect it might took a bit, I don't know, quite some time to able to actually just get every single stuff as possible so either way expecting about the fact that this game is going to be super duper easy for me especially because we've already experienced the wii version of the game before back in 2020 but now we're on 2023 so it makes things a little bit more uh relative at that point so and uh aside from all that stuff though is about the fact that well one thing i did not actually realize it's about the fact that matter is though, although again, we'll talk more details about that in the future. So either way, so yeah, that's as far as I can say in terms of the forms of, although relatively speaking, as you probably already noticed, during the forms of the menu selection screen, after when you select the file, uh, or relatively speaking, when you select the main me mode, Basically, we actually come across into this unexpected uh, um, empty menu thing right there, which, as a result, I think something tells me about the fact that we might come across into a, I would say, a new side story of something like that, even though, well, we already know about this, but it's just about the fact that I don't want to able to spoil things majorly for this point. For those of you who are the newcomers out there who ever experienced this game, so, I'm probably not going to be able to spoil things too much about this just yet. Because obviously about the fact that in the beginning portion of the game, it's pretty self-explanatory. But until in World 2 and onwards, that we will come across into something entirely brand new that was exclusive to this game as of now. Although, relatively speaking, no, we're not exactly sure of what's going to be up next for Kirby in the future, but I highly doubt that we will be able to actually get some exciting stuff for Kirby for the future. So... Even though it's a bit of a shame about the fact that certain uh, uh, Kirby games are no longer available for the eShop downloadable versions are not only on the Nintendo 3DS, but also on the Wii U as well. Mind you, there's nothing that much for a Wii U Kirby game aside from Rainbow Paintbrush because that was the only game they've got for the Wii U outside of the forms of Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U, but that's besides the point, so... Obviously, the music remains the same as the forms of how it does in the original Wii version, so I have no complaints there. And what's this? We actually got ourselves a familiar copy ability, and this one appears to be Festival. For those of you who don't know, I believe Festival copy ability was originated from the likes of Kirby Star Allies. So if you use it at that one point, you, it's basically act out as a screen nuke, basically. So if you manage to able to get surrounded by certain enemy encounters, then use it at the right time, and then basically you can able to replace those enemies as in not only certain star collectibles that if you manage to able to reach for about 100 of these star objects, then obviously it gives you an extra life, just like always. 
And speaking of lives, though, we're going back to the life system. So because of that, because I'm pretty much used to it with Kirby and the Forgotten Land for some reason, where it comes to the forms of our fact that that game doesn't have lives, so instead every time you die in certain points throughout the game, then you lose your uh, store coins. So either way, before we continue things on, on the other hand, let's go and investigate with this brand new side mode that is exclusive to this game, that's what appears to be body forms of Merry Megaland. So, I believe something tells me this amusement park is super interesting. This is the tale of a different world in a different time. Oh, that sounds convenient. There, a traveler named Megalore built an amusement park where he could entertain his friends. It is, It was a merry place where four friends could enjoy attractions and collect souvenirs together. It was a park full of excitement, where dreams could come to life. It was a place called Megaland. Well, I can see how this is going. And something tells me about the fact that once you dive right into the merry Megalo land, you do realize that the frame rate actually drops a bit. So because of that, I was expecting that it will be 60 FPS, but since this particular hub world right there is entirely in 3D, it's referring back to the forms of 30 FPS, which I don't mind about it too much though. But as you can see, we actually come across into not one, but 10 sub-games in this entire game. And the reason why we came here in the first place, because there's actually the forms of a stamp rally, which basically that, well, we'll explain more details about that once we get back to the main mode. So either way, chances are though is about the fact that you can able to have your spare time to able to actually play certain, uh, Familiar sub games if you ever played the past Kirby games before, especially now I think about it about the fact that we pretty much already know uh, certain Kirby uh, sub games or something like that. Mind you, we have already experienced those in the past since Journey Forms event 2018 or something like that. What if we first start ourselves our, you know, a whole bunch of Kirby Let's Plays back in the, uh, you know, 2018, like I said before. And basically, this is where we come across into ourselves some quite a number of things here and there, in addition to certain sub-games you can able to interact with. But there's also some collectible masks you can able to obtain, and on top of that, some food supplies, which, again, we'll explain more details about that if we manage to able to get onto the fourth stage in uh, Cookie Country. And also, that particular Waddle Dee just shows up. So, meaning about the fact that he, every time when if you go into the actual stage selection, basically though, that particular Waddle Dee will show up, and then basically he can either give you uh, a little bit of a supplies, because um, if you managed to able to actually just, well, again, I'll show that particular feature until later, because either way, yeah, that's what I can say about this for the most part, because relatively speaking though, that well, whatever when this game first announced, back in Informs have been September 2022 on Nintendo Direct, despite the fact there's a bit lackluster in comparison, just because of all that too much farming simulations that most people complain about, and then as soon as I'm about to give up, when this particular game first announced, alongside with the actual full name, of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel, now calls it Tears of the Kingdom. Basically, I was very excited to see this particular game in action, because it's not only this is without doubt as one of the greatest Kirby games returning onto the Nintendo Switch, but also it's been quite some time since I actually have last played Kirby, ever since Journey forms have been, uh, well, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and briefly, uh, uh, you know, Kirby uh, Dream Buffet, or Kirby's Dream Buffet. Although, relatively speaking though, speaking of the forms of Super Kirby Clash, as I mentioned this briefly, I've pretty much done story mode during the forms of in Super Kirby Clash, although aside from the fact that I pretty much suck at the game, especially concerning about the fact that with all these, you know what I mean, horrendous microtransactions comes into play, but apart from those aside things though, I did pretty okay. Aside from the fact that, well, relatively speaking, I constantly find myself able to keep on utilizing the actual power potion, because, let me tell you, the power potion is a godsend when it comes to struggling for those certain boss encounters, so, that's what I can say about this for the most part, so. But, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Uh, what was your first impressions in terms of the forms of Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe? 
uh, compared to the forms of how it does it on the Wii version of the game. Honestly though, I actually really enjoyed them both, especially noticeable with the Switch version right now, clearly because about the fact you can finally play Kirby's Return to Dreamland on a go, so, well, to be speaking though, that uh, it seems pretty awesome, all things considered. And on top of that, you're able to actually access to 10 sub-games, which is a lot more than you forms of how it doesn't on any other Kirby games up to this point. And on top of all that stuff though, is about the fact that, well, there is that one unfortunate thing about this version in particular though, and that is about the fact that, speaking of multiplayer, you can still able to play multiplayer within local and stuff like that, up to four people plays the game cooperatively, and on top of that, playing sub-games in general in the forms of Merry Mega Land. Unfortunately though, there's no online functionality. Well, technically, there was the online functionality in this game, but it's only for one specific sub-game only. And because of that though, again, we'll mention more about it once we get into that particular tiny little mode. Or, should I say, with the forms of the greatest mode in terms of this whole entire package. So, either way, despite the fact that most people complain about the fact that the price tag is still $60, during the forms of the US countries and stuff like that, which is a bit, I don't know, too much for them. But either way, as you can tell, oh wow, this animation looks new. Especially about the fact that now the actual tree, the burning trees, now actually got tipped over. That's actually interesting. So as you can tell, we actually stumbled across into another set of collectibles, but this time what it appears to be by the forms of those Mega Lore tickets, which basically every time you obtain one of them, either in the forms of in the entire main game itself, or you can able to obtain them by simply able to go through Mega Merry Mega Low Land itself. Basically, you can able to actually just to fill up your entire stamp itself, or the actual stamp little paper thingy, whatever that is. And basically though, if you the more you collect those stamps, as soon as they reach to the next page, basically though is about the fact that you can able to get certain rewards if you manage to able to collect well enough stamps. So either way, uh, again, I'll explain more details about that once we get into the actual mode itself for reals. But of course, first thing though is about the fact that we do need to take care of the regular main story mode first. And on top of that, you know, just all these stuff in general. So either way. And of course, just like always, this will be the full 100% playthrough of this particular Let's Play of you know, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, because, you know, we've already experienced the Wii version before, but we feel like we can do it again, but this time, well, I can finally use myself the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which I always appreciate with that controller in mind, so... And I just realized I've got myself my, uh, Leaf Copy ability, which, obviously, it plays just like the forms of how it does in the original Wii version, so... Yeah, nothing different from there, I don't think. But also, I just realized about the fact that since this is now the remake of Kirby's Return to Dreamland, you do realize about the fact that, you know, King DDD's design is actually a lot different this time compared to the forms of how it does in the original Wii version. Like, I know for one thing about the fact that his design is actually based off from Kirby and the Forgotten Land, which it seems kind of odd at first glance, but then, I'm sure I'm pretty much used to it right now, but uh, some people might tend to complain about it. Oh, these are stamp tickets. I totally forgot about the name of it, so I do apologize for that, folks. But uh, basically, yeah, if you collect more of those uh, stamp tickets, basically you get certain rewards if you fill up the page. So, anyways, time for the first boss in a game. You know exactly who it's going to be. Something very familiar, and quite in particular. That is none other than Wispy Woods himself. Now, I believe every single boss is also utilizes the black outlines as well, which, again, kind of um, hit and miss when it comes to that particular visual presentation all in all. But uh, aside from all that stuff, though, I think it's fine as it is. So let's keep on utilizing the fire dash ability, so that way I can able to actually just try to avoid not only certain apples, but also with the forms of, uh, I would say, Gordos as well. And make sure you don't get sucked up by the forms that would be words, because otherwise you get out to able to... Oh, I just realized something. The massive difference between the forms of this game compared to the original Wii version this time is that certain uh, uh, reaction commands or something like that has now been replaced. Well, you know with the forms of the Wii, Wii version, you do have to utilize the motion controls a lot. Well, in here, this is now being replaced by 
analog stick uh, rotating and stuff like that, which, again, we'll point things out whenever we stumble across into certain situations like this one. So, either way, that concludes Cookie Country, and we pretty much restored one of those um, auras right here for the sake of the forms of the star, um, well, low star cutter. So, again, I apologize for that particular commentary error right there, but uh, basically it shows us one of those parts will be inserted. So, either way. And of course, the visuals have been updated, so yeah, not much else to say about this for the most part, so... And also, as soon as we're able to get inside Lore Star Cutter, basically, in addition, as I said before, that in addition with the forms of, you can still able to actually access to not only challenge stages, but also they're able to actually give you uh, a copy abilities room, and on top of that, with the sub-games. Now, though, in terms of sub-games in general, basically, as I said before, there's only 10 of them this time around, compared to the Wii version, there's only 2. Well, one of those sub-games is actually not included, and that's what appears to be Scope Shards, because, um, I've no idea why that particular sub-game is no longer there in this version of the game. Although, I wouldn't mind about it too much, because after all, I'm pretty much used to with, uh, uh, Ninja jo Jojo a lot, because I think this is definitely one of their fan favorites of all in all. And on top of all that stuff, though, there was actually two brand new challenge stages, as far as I've realized. That's something new we have not come across into yet, but I'm sure enough, if we managed able to collect even more energy spheres, that we will be able to actually come across into one of those other two brand new abilities that, well, we've already technically come across into one of those uh, abilities familiar, but that's actually based off um, Kirby Star Allies, which is technically the returning ability, but either way though, that's as far as I can usually think about them, so either way though, and I'm sure enough it will say new onto the right, and that can be also applies for uh, onto the left side as well, so either way though, but again, we'll show this off later, so because of that though, I have no time to waste able to get a lot of distractions at this point. So with that being said though, I think we should probably end things off this point right here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Kirby's Return to Dreamlands Deluxe. And that is about the fact that we're going to be hit onto World 2, which is Raisin Ruins. So that will be pretty interesting because it's almost like food related worlds so far. So I'll see you guys until on Wednesday. Later, fellas.